Lemmy here, and welcome back to Taylor Tales. We're here heading to James Route, Chapter 16. When are we falling in love with him? <laughs> I feel like I'm on trial. Currently, I'm sitting in Forrester Incorporation's headquarters. Everything went by so fast. Lots of cars and flying ships came over and picked up, picked all of us up. They did, did they detained James and Eok. Is that the same Eok? <laughs> Did he become human? <laughs> Transporting them in a different ship. I don't know what became of them. As far as I know, Caleb to return to his own ship and left Earth. I still can't breathe. I'm actually back. <sighs> Chico, Kane's voice disturbs me from my thoughts. Yes, Kane. Anything for, for you, Kane. <laughs> I look up at him. <sighs> Why won't you tell me, he asks. Tell you what? <sighs> While you're protecting those damn aliens, the both of them. It's a very long story. At least what Ioka can readily say it's because he helped me escape. But honestly, even if, even I have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that he didn't want Kane to finish off James. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I saw my best friend kill him. I sigh and lean my face into my hands. Give me a moment, Kane. I was in outer space not too long ago. And I mean legit in space with no suit. I don't even know how I survived that. You're in space, Kane repeats incredulously. Yes, you shot at us. <sighs> I didn't do anything, he says indignantly. Mm. Correct, we were the ones that decided to shoot the ship, says the voice then in the room. Two other goons fo goons follow suit. See, I was gonna say you look cute, but not really. At least not to me. Damn, that long ass fingernails. <laughs> or, not fingernails, fingers. <laughs> a perfectly tailored coat, neatly styled purple hair. It's a forester's hair. Neil for Neil? That is Neil? Hey, no way. I... You're the Neil that we played? What? A long time ago? Ain't no way. You look like a totally different man. How did you rank number two on my list? <laughs> His face is plastered all over the news for being rich and powerful. Uh. Miss Melody, I presume, he asked, looking at me. I don't... I don't know. He kind of looks off to me. Maybe because his neck... I don't... I don't know. Yes, I answer. Had we known you were on that ship, we wouldn't have fired. But it was best to defend Earth from another attack, he explains. He shot it twice, I point out. The second one nearly killed me. Mm. Yet you're alive, he draws out. Alright, little bitch. I glare at him. Don't start being pendant pendantic with me. Neil sits behind his desk, watch keeping a watchful eye on me. The two men who are with him stand by the door, looking like imposing bodyguards. Oh. We have a lot of things to discuss, but first, would you like something to drink or eat? His, uh, yeah. I would like a gourmet meal. <laughs> his golden eyes stare at, his, at the bruises on my mm. arms. Craft's medical attention. I wrap my arms around my body in a defensive manner. I know this looks bad. Kane finally notices the bruises on my arms as well. What did they do to you there? He gasped. Nothing. They were just bruises from shots, I explained. They are drugging you. N no, I protest. Even when I try to explain, it all sounds worse. <laughs> we'll get back to that later. He waves his hand at Kane. Where did you take them? I ask, wanting to know where Eok and James uh. are. That's classified information at the moment, which is what I was about to... I quickly interrupt him. Why can't you tell me? I question him. Planer just suffered an attack. We're trying the best we can to make sure the extraterrestrials aren't a threat to us anymore. Are you hurting them? Neil rubs his temples. <sighs> Wait, why do you care? Kane jumps in. Because one of them helped me escape. I can't have you hurting him. <laughs> Miss Man Lady, I promise you, we're not di dissecting any extraterrestrials. They've been detained and are currently being held. We'll eventually interrogate them. Interrogate, I explain. Don't tell me they're planning on hurting them. I can't. No, I won't allow for that to happen. Ioka's helped me and he's been my friend. There's no way I would let him get tortured. And James, too. I'm conflicted about him, but I think I understand his situation now. The reason he's had to attack Earth, now that he's failed, more trouble is coming. <clears throat> in fact, your brother's invention has been very helpful in that regard. Neil adds nonchalantly. Right? I see my voice halting. Is he here? I only see him so bad. It's enough to make tear no. up again. Right, Melody has been notified of your situation. He's in transit. Mm. Yeah, don't worry, Michiko. Right, is the one that sent me to the park in the first place. I'm sure he'll be here before you know it. Kane reassures uh. me. Miss Melody, we brought you here to discuss some very important matters. Neil suddenly begins. I'm going to guess it's not because I'm a, I was abducted or anything. I'm a uh. roughly four months ago. Four months ago. <laughs> Holy fuck! That's a quarter of the. Is that a quarter of the year? Whatever. Whatever. 
four months. <laughs> Kalina was attacked by an un un unidentified ship. The ships left the same day, and from our reports, you were taken along with them. I nearly stutter. Has it really been that long? Four months. Mm. Ryan went mad, I tell you. Well, I did too, but he's the genius who can actually do something about it, Kane interjects. Yeah. The world was in chaos. Suddenly, we need to protect ourselves from not only the many powerful factions and terrorists on the Earth, but also attacks from outer space, Neil continues. Mm. Forrester Inc. has erected a new division, the Defense Against Extraterrestrial Terrorism, or DAE. D day what the fuck D A E T for short. Mr. Melody has been a valued asset in helping shape our national defenses from it from, yeah, from any such attacks. To think my brother was just like you know a genius in my basement that would make a lot of explosions because of his mistakes, but now he's like top dog. That's when I realized when the ship was shot. Rice invention shot down the ship. I say. Mm. We now have a defense mechanism that shoots powerful blasts into space. Today proved it works. And that Forrester Inc. can protect Earth as we know it. With my brother's invention, I point out, not liking how he's taking all the credit. <laughs> well, he wouldn't have gotten very far without our financial backing, Neil says with a <sighs> smirk. But I digress. The public knows very little about the extraterrestrials, and we like to keep it that way. The fact we captured two of them is now a national secret. Neil produces a stack of papers from a briefcase. He pushes them across the desk towards me oh. and Kane. You would need to sign this dis non-disclosure clause. Oh. What? King exclaims. For what? I question. People are going to want to ask me where I've been, you know. Um. Actually, King starts. He shoots me this smug look. Like he's privy to some information that I'm unaware <laughs> of. We were ahead of that too. Your disappearance has been kept from the public as well. Very few people actually knew of your kidnapping. No one knew. I thought the entire earth would have known my face by now. I turned to King. And you went along with it. I accuse him. For what it's worth, I was against the idea, but Ryan made me agree to it. In return for whatever money he needed to work on his invention or something. Mm. So it's Ryan's fault. <laughs> the document identifies the people who are clear for this classified information, including everyone in this room. Outside of that circle of clear names, though, you are not to breathe a word of this to another soul. Neil lowers his eyebrows, pushing his glasses up the bridge of his mm. nose. You shall not contact your friends to share experiences in outer space. That's a little difficult to do, no? <laughs> you should not use any form of social media to talk about these experiences, whether anonymously, under a different pen name, or under your own name. The more Neil blabbers on the list of things I can and cannot do, I slowly start to tune him out. I'm still in shock that I'm back on Earth and immediately thrown into some kind of legal waiver. Uh. King grows loudly and quickly starts signing the paper. He didn't even read it. Why do I have to sign this? I asked. Very aware of uh. it. Very wary of it. Unfortunately, if you want to return to your daily life, you must. You have now become a person of interest, all of you involved. Together, we can strengthen our defenses against the extraterrestrial invasion, but we must keep it from the public. Well, I say staring at the paper. Uh, Where is she? A voice hollers through the hallways. Uh, is she in there? Let me in. Get out of my way, you muscle head. Oh, it's my brother! Hi, brother. That voice, I get it from my scene, turn around just in time to see Ryan burst through the doors. The two bodyguards immediately apprehend him, holding him back. <gasps> Michiko, he exclaims, upon seeing me. Neil shakes his head at the both of them. <sighs> it's fine, let him go. Right! Call my brother! I would be falling my eyeballs out. <laughs> my brother, like, risked everything to bring me back. What the fuck? Tears start running down my cheeks as I fling my arms around Rai, who returns the favor, squishing me against his body. <gasps> I can't believe it, he sobs in an unsightly manner. He touches my face, tilting left and right, inspecting me to see if it really is me. Yeah, I'm back. I still have the big smile. Yeah. Your your hair, he says, noticing it's different. I wipe the tears from my eyes. I had to cut it. I say with a small chuckle. I have so many stories to tell. But I can't tell him! <laughs> you stink so bad, he laughs. Shut up. I couldn't shower for nearly a month, I reply, smiling broadly. Ryan's eyes darken with his, when his hands lower and he touches my arms. Uh. What is this? Did they hurt you? No, no, it's okay, I say quickly. <clears throat> as much as I would like to allow this family reunion to continue, we should finish up our contracts here. Neil interrupts uh. us. Pipe down and wait your turn. I haven't seen my sister in months. She's been traumatized. Who knows what she's been through? The last thing she needs right now is you harping on her to sign a piece of paper, Ryan argues with him. I can't help but smile and feel so proud. I'm so happy I'm back. I missed Ryan so much. Uh. Neil sighs dejectedly. <laughs> Fine, I'll grant you a moment. He leaves the room taking his bodyguards with him. Were you really the one that shot the ship? Shot at the ship, ask once we're alone. <sighs> I try to stop the lot of them. What if you were on it? Turns out I was right. They blew up the room I was in. I was blasted into space. Space? Oh. Michiko's a fucking legend. <laughs> 
Kane interjects, but I somehow managed to reel us back in. Kane, you would have been proud. I think James got me back inside. I'm unsure. I fell unconscious. Huh? Right tells his head. James, he repeats. Oh, James, Captain James, that's the guy you caught, the one that started this mess. Mm. You see the one that gave you this, he asked, pointing at my arms. Yes. Ah! I'm going to kill him! Right yells, his eyes flashing with anger. You don't want to listen. You don't understand. Let me explain, I interrupt him. Why are you defending him? Kane asked, looking irritated. I swallowed my tongue. I didn't mean to defend James. He's done plenty of things to be upset about. However, treating me with medicine should not be mistaken for torture. I'm not. You just don't know what I'm really... Well, you don't... You don't know what's really going on, okay? <laughs> I say quickly. Then why don't you tell us, right, Hops? I got these bruises because of the injections he was giving me, I explained. I was sick. Sick. Injections. What is going on? I asked, getting more confused. I sighed. This is a mess. I have so much to tell you guys, but at the moment, not everything is black and white. I think what's important is to focus on what James said right before he passed out. Barrett is going to kill us all. That's a threat I do not take lightly. James failed his mission again, which means if what Barrett has said was true right before we left Yule, then he's going to return to Earth. Guys, something worse is cut wing to come, I warned um. him. You're not making any sense, Pachiko, says we're concerned. Look, that ship left, right? Huh? Yeah, they couldn't handle the preparations we made. Our newly formed DAET team kicked their asses, right? explains. That ship is going back to its home planet to inform their leader of what happened, and he's going to come back personally to finish the huh? job. What are you saying? Kane asked. I thought the guy I fried was the leader. I shake my head. He's just the captain of the ship. They have someone who rules the planet, and he's a, he's much scarier. Veritas is the one we should all worry about. If the power that I saw coming from Nornis is something that Veritas is easily able to control himself, then James is the least of our worries. Both Kane and Rice stay silent as they process my words. <laughs> so more aliens are coming, says Kane with a sneer. Pretty much. <laughs> we'll be ready for them, Rai reassures me. I need to see them, I say. Huh? See who? Kane asks, confused. The ones that are locked up right now. I need to speak to uh... them. Why? Rai inquires. They're locked up and subdued. My invention is keeping them in check. Your invention? Mm. Yeah, remember that weird infinity bracelet Ryan wanted to make with my electricity? Kane interjects. The one that blew up in your face. I look at them disapprovingly. Yeah. I improved it. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but the side effects surprised me. Side effects? Oh no. Don't tell me they're being tortured already. Huh. With the unique properties of Kane's electricity, I invented a bracelet that locks your ability, your power. It keeps the current of electricity flowing that prevents you from using your ability. I'm honestly quite impressed. That bracelet that can turn off your ability. Is that true? Hmm. I mean, I haven't tested it on many superheroes yet, and we looked out when we realized it worked on that alien. So yeah, he can't do anything anymore. You're safe. He's not a threat. It's not that I'm afraid James is a threat at this point. He's failed his mission, and Verita's personally threatened to kill Lena in front of him if he messed up. He's in a bad situation, much like the rest of us. I believe we can still join forces together. Right? You don't understand. I think it is in our best interest if we convince them to join us and help us against the attack. We can't have him locked up like this. <laughs> Ryan laughs at my suggestion. <laughs> Surely you're joking, right? Why the hell should we ask them to join us? One of them is already my ally, I reply. To lock him up is unethical. He's on our side. The doors to the office open and Neil walks back inside. <sighs> Alright, I've heard enough, he sighs. You're, you're eavesdropping, Kane accuses mm. him. We have cameras, yes. Neil turns yeah. to me. So what is this about another threat we should need to worry about? I take in a deep breath to prepare myself. Neil Forrester is a businessman. I have to play smart. Good. Now that I have your attention, I want to make a deal. Huh? A deal. What for? The prisoners. I want to see them and I want to make sure no harm comes to them. I then close my eyes. I know I'm asking the impossible here, but Eok deserves it. And release them. <laughs> Neil laughs, looking unconcerned. But then he sees them dead serious and stops laughing. Michiko, what the hell are you talking about? You want to free them? You really do have Stockholm Syndrome. We need to take you to see a therapist. No! What the fuck? King rattles on. Yeah. Neil crosses his arms. What would you even offer him to turn? Uh, information? <laughs> I've been with these people for four months? I have a lot to know about. There's the business side of him. I knew he'd toss away the idea because there's nothing in it for them. Luckily, there's a lot of information I can offer. I have a lot of knowledge about the planet, about their soldiers, how powerful they are. Not to mention, I already know the prisoners. I can talk to them, bring them over to our side as allies. Neil lazily looks at his fingernails. That's hardly enough to justify the release of these extraterrestrials. Well, yeah, it's a stupid idea, Kane agrees. Mm. However, perhaps if you were to throw in the schematics to the bracelet device Mr. Medley invented, then we might have room to negotiate. Huh? What? Rai looks perplexed. Deal, I say immediately. Uh... Michiko, you girls, you don't know what you're agreeing to here. Whatever it takes, let me see oh. them. 
All right, we'll make some arrangements. You'll hear from us tomorrow, New confirms. Wait, did I just, did I just take Rise and Vention as a negotiation for Neil to take it and not credit Rai? That sounds bad. I had to make sure nothing bad happens to them. Eok helped me escape, and James could be very a ve a be a very valuable asset against it, the imminent, imminent threat of Veritas arriving. Rai just keeps staring at me as if I've lost my mind. I might. I might have. Poop goes my brain. That I'm back on Earth is bizarre to say. I feel like it's not real, that I'm in shock. I expected to open my eyes and find myself back on Yule. My own living room feels so unfamiliar to me. I don't actually feel like I'm home. Both Ryan came with Barton with questions last night. I had to tell him to shut up and leave me alone as I just wanted to get some rest. My boutique has been closed ever since my disappearance. The Ryan used the Forester's Ink money to pay, all of, f pay for all my astounding bills. He's handled everything well in my absence. I finally charged my phone as well, so I turned it on. I flipped through the pictures I took on Yule, confirming that what I went through was real. One of the pictures shows Eok in the training room. I can't stop thinking about Eok and James, what ha what's happened to them. I had to protect Eok at all costs. He helped me escape after all. I can't leave him rotting in a cell. My phone beeps. I've received a message from Rai. They're here. Little pipsqueak! Bro, I would probably- Yeah, yeah, that's totally a nickname. I mean, I wouldn't do that for my brother, because his voice is rather deep. <laughs> I've taken a deep breath time to meet them. We're taken to an unknown location. There are no windows in the van. There's no signal in the building either, so we can't use our phones. I guess it is a secret facility at Forest Forest mm. Inc. But this melody will help you feel more settled in now that you're back on Earth, Neil greets me. Not really, I answer him honestly. Can I see them? A little peep, I'm not here to make small talk. Neil turns around and starts to oh. walk. Follow me. He leads us through a corridor, passing by several armed bodyguards. Um... I hope you know what you're doing, says Rai quietly. I hope so, too. <laughs> My idea is crazy, but I do believe James is on our side. Uh, having James on our side will help tremendously, and Eok, well, he doesn't deserve to be locked up in the first place. Neil stops as we pass by a large pane of glass. Behind the window is the unmistakable body of Eok tied to a chair. A black bag covers his head. Eok! I slam my fist on the window. You barbaric people! Remove the sack from his head this instant! That is no way to treat my friend! Eok's head stirs as he recognizes the sound uh -huh. of my voice. Princess? He calls out weakly. Uh -huh. This melody is for our own safety that we take it off right now, I yell. Uh -huh. You better listen to her, but she looks fierce, Rai pipes in. He closes his eyes and sighs. He then flicks his head at one of the guards, who quickly comes over and presses his hand against the window. The window lights up to scan his hand and keeps. A small opening appears in the glass. I don't even waste a second to rush inside. My hands quickly tear the bag off his head. He looks going eyes roll in different directions. Ah, he says, confused at the sudden light. His hands and feet are bound. I could draw my throat and quickly slice through plastic tie wraps. Princess is alright, I'm glad, he says with a small smile. Hey, now, I did not agree to release a prisoner, and Yook quickly enters the room in alarm. It's not a threat, I bark at him. Then I look at Yook's face. Are you hurt anywhere, I ask? Yook's hand reaches for his side, and I can tell that it's bruised. He could very well have broken a few ribs. Uh. Mostly fine, he replies. Captain Caleb's kick was very strong. Um. Michiko, who is exactly is this guy, and how can you understand him? Asked Rai. I turn to look at them. Wait, you can't understand him? Yook taps my arm to catch my uh. attention. We have a babble fish in our ears. It makes our brain understand each other's language, he reminds me. I will have to con consciously focus on speaking your language before they can understand you. Um. What's he saying? The old demands to know. Do you think you can do that, Eok? I need them to understand that you're not a threat, that you helped me escape, I tell him. Yeah. I will try, he agrees. From now on, whenever James and Eok speak in their own language in front of others, their font will change to reflect this. Ah, okay. I turn to, turn to the rest once more. This is Eok. He's a soldier in their ranks, but in reality, he's a spy that's been working for the rebellion. He helped me escape off the ship. His enemy is our enemy, explained. Mm. A spy, you say? Neil starts to circle around Eok with a common enemy. Veritas, I say, which makes Eok's brows look dumb. Mm. This Veritas, who is uh. he? He took my planet, Eok answers him. Everyone's shocked to hear him speak. I guess he's actually speaking English at the moment. It does sound slower than usual, reminding me of how he used to uh. talk before. It speaks, says Neil, slightly impressed. All night long and we didn't hear a peep from it, but now I can formulate words. Have some respect. Don't call him an it, I tell him. So then rise leans closer to you. Mm. Fascinating. How can you speak our language? It's this little device in our ears. It lets us interpret foreign languages, I guess. I quickly explain. Huh? You have one too, Rai turns to me. Yes, I say, brushing away the hair behind my ears to reveal a tiny scar at the top of my ear. 
Anyways, let's not get distracted right now. I say while I was shaking my head, right? I can sometimes get a little too excited about technology. Baroness is their lord. Uh... Illegitimate one, he corrects me. I let Yoke do the talking this time around. You take water planets. He wants your planet. Yoke says, uh, says Yoke in slightly broken English. It's taking him a lot of effort to speak this way. <laughs> And why should we be afraid of this variant? Is Neil asked flippantly. Your attack yesterday was stopped dead in its track. A failure. We now have an impenetrable defense. Eok's eyes narrow. <laughs> Veritas has power to undo planet, he says. Undo, I repeat. Eok looks at me apologetically. I'm sorry, Prince. It's hard for me to focus. It's okay, I reassure him. Have you had anything to drink or eat yet? No. Tell us more about this Veritas, Neil the Rose says. Can you stop being so hard on him? He's trying his best to talk to given the circumstances. Maybe if you give him some water, he'd be in a better shape to help us at if I need him. Fine, Neil huffs. Guards, get some water for a prisoner. One of the guards leaves the room. Princess Veritas is a very powerful being. Do you remember when the young prince Normus flashed a blind light? Yes, I remember. How everything was pretty much torn to shreds in the alley. In that alley. Normus killed one of the rebels as well. The guard returns with a cup of water, but they take it from his hand and offer it to you. Here, drink. Ah, uh. uh, thank you. I was quite thirsty. He will happily down the entire cup of water. He wipes his mouth with the back of his hand. His focus, he focuses his gaze on mm. Neil. Undo planet, destroy, gone. He says in his ear's tone. Everyone in the room understands his words and the implications. <laughs> You're saying there's a being in the galaxy out there with the power to destroy planets. Neil acts flippantly. He almost sounds scared. Uh. He come for your planet. Three Nunun here. He here. Huh? What the heck's a Nunun? Bri raises his brows. It's something like 20 days explained. So like... Two times three, 60 days. Oh, they, they already answered that. Okay. Two months. You guys have two months to prepare yourselves. He's arriving in 60 days. Is that what you're saying? Asked Neil. Neil gives a slightly smi slight smile after seeing the word expression on my uh. face. Don't be scared, princess. We anticipated this from the start. The resistance will use the opportunity to overthrow him. You mean they come for Earth? Uh. Yes. With less soldiers staying behind, the resistance has a chance to take over the palace. But what about when he arrives here? Isn't he taking Princess Lena with him as well? Uh. That will be our moment to strike, he says with a grin. Uh. Can you two stop speaking as if you're the only ones in the room? Right complaints. Some of us don't understand alien language. Mm. That runt, says Eo, looking at Rai. He looks like you. I end up kicking at his description of Rai. That's my brother. Yeah, and you better not touch my sister or I'll kill you, Rai threatens huh? him. Who is this Princess Lena I mentioned? Neo interjects. So much to unpack, I say with a sigh. It's, it's Lena. Okay, I don't know how to correctly say that, but so I'm gonna... Whatever. Did he say Lana, though? Yeah, he said Lana. He didn't say Lena. I turn around to face Neil. You heard what Yook had to say. I think you understand what's going to happen mm. now. Another attack. Neil finishes my thoughts. And we need his help to stop it, including the other one as well. <laughs> what are you proposing? Let us all work together to stop Veritas from destroying Earth. Let them go free. <gasps> free! Rai exclaims. Neil pauses to think. <laughs> I can't just let them go free. These are beings who launched an attack on us yesterday. And they expect us to let them walk among us like nothing happened. I can hide them, I say immediately. There's this, um, like, a cabin. My parents own it. Uh. Mom and Dad's cabin, Ryan repeats. It's been empty for years. We haven't returned since he died. Exactly. It's empty, secluded. They can stay there. He never has his temples of looking upset. Uh. Just because you have a, have a hole to hide to... Yeah. Have a hole to put them in doesn't mean we can let them go free. They attacked Earth. We can't trust them. They could attack again. I fed all my fingers together, trying to come up with any solutions. The, the bracelet! You said it was holding their power back, right? Uh, Michiko's not fused to their body or something. It's just a prototype. I only have the one that's currently being used on the other one, Ray explains. Then... Then... I rack my brain trying to come up with something else. What can I do to make sure they will trust them? I'm already taking a wild shot in the dark and presuming I can convince James to be on our side. But how can I convince Forrester, Inc.? They have a point. They can't trust them to not attack again. Promises not to attack are just empty words. And then it hits me. Oathkeeper, I announce. Neil tilts his head. Huh? Where are you going with the... Call Oathkeeper. You can make a deal. Make them promise not to attack. Oathkeeper, superhero shrouded in mystery. They deal in promises. I've never actually met them, but I know they have ties to Forrester, Inc. And that they sometimes hire them to seal an oath. An oath that cannot be broken unless both parties are willing to die on their word. <laughs> Neil sighs. <laughs> Ridiculous. For one, Oathkeeper services always come with a very steep price he starts. <laughs> And secondly, it only works with bo when both parties know the same language. I shrug. That's fine. Just find it to me. I can speak to uh -huh. them. You're willing to die, he questions me. I look down at Eok still in the chair. He was willing to sacrifice his life for me. James, he has saved me many times before. I wouldn't say I'm ready to die for both of them, however. Uh -huh. He 
Chico, are you mad? Are you being serious right now? You can't just make an oath like that. That's some serious shit. The reason I'm standing here is because of Eok. He's our ally and I trust him. Eok blushes timidly. He humble this lily grunt. Mm. Regardless whether or not he's your friend, Neil starts. You are not in a position to bargain with us. Both of these are under Forrester Inc.'s jur jurisdiction. You said you wanted the schematics to the bracelet, no? In return for my brother's invention, you let me make an oath to both of them. And there won't be an issue. They can help us. Uh. Chico, don't just go around using my designs bargaining chips, right, groans. Neil furrows his eyebrows and folds his arms, deep uh. in thought. We will have to draft a new contract. You have to abide by some very strict rules. They must be chipped and tracked. They must be surveyed 24-7. They cannot be alone. Those are some of the basics. My twinkle is considering it. Yeah, I can do that. Mm. In return, you sign our contract and Mr. Melody hands over the designs of the bracelet contraption. I nod my head. There, there, there this doesn't feel right. I'm using Rai's brain invention as a bargaining chip because I have nothing else. W what if Rai wants his shit to be his only? Well, this is not how I planned my morning, right, uh. grumbles. Mr. Yvette, he will call us one of the guards. Call my cousin. Cousin. Uh. We have an oath to make. Your cousin is the hero? The oath maker? Whatever the guy is. Oath keeper, not maker. As we wait for the oath keeper to show up, I had asked them to let me see James. He is secured another cell, much like Eok, he's been tied and backed. I don't like how they're treating the both of them. This is just unnecessarily cruel. I've already gotten another cup of water, so I suspect he hasn't had anything to drink yet, either. Let me be alone with him, I tell everyone. Huh? Alone? With him? I ask the incredulously. Yes, he won't hurt me, I say, confident in my assessment. You accept the risks, Neil points out. Yes. Oh. Very well, open the cell. A guard opens the entrance and I enter. I take in a deep breath as I approach a chair in the middle of the room. He hasn't moved or said anything. His wrists are tied or behind his back, cuffed and chained, unlike Eoku got the tie wrap treatment. I know James is strong, strong enough to free himself from his chains, but I also realize he's wearing the bracelet Ryan invented. Perhaps it really is sufficient to hold him back. My fingers reach out for the bag and I grab a hold of it, slowly removing it from his head. While he's healed up, a mop of black hair falls down on his face. His eyes are closed. It's so strange to be in front of him like this. Our roles have been reversed. Before, I was the one who was captured at his mercy. Now, everything depends on me. Good, you've healed, I say, scanning his body for any injuries. His armor is tattered, but his body looks fine. Though the impact area is still a little bruised. James, I softly call out his name. Is he pretending to be asleep, or is he really out cold? I've got some water for you, I say as I raise a cup of water. Doesn't matter, James grumbles. I bite back my tongue. James spoke, though his eyes are still closed. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Yeah. Everything. I know your mission failed, but my offer is still on the table, I point out. <gasps> what good is your offer when War Baird is going to murder my sister? James spits out, eyes finally yeah. wide open. I lost. Now I'm forced to watch her die before he kills everyone else. He says in a, this defeated voice like he's accepted it. I kneel down in front of him. You don't need to watch her die, I say in a soft voice. Now drink some. I press the cup to his lip, but he turns out the cheek, knocking away the cup from my hands, letting me spill on the floor. Rashea is non-compliant, so I pull back the side. We can save Lena, you know, I point out. I don't care for Lena at this point. After all, she wanted me dead, but I know James thinks the world of her. He doesn't want her to die. And I don't want Varys to blow up the earth. Don't speak nonsense, James grumbles. There's no way you pathetic earthlings could ever hope to defeat Lord Veritas. I cock my head to the side. Us, earthlings, chase your platoon off the planet, and we have you bound and chained, I point out. That wretched grunt, he ruined all my plans, made everything fall apart, and my own men were without a leader as I had to find you. Do you really think you can save my sister from Lord Veritas' claws? Jim huffs, don't make me laugh. If you help us, I'm sure we can make it work. We have many superheroes ready to fight. There won't be a match for Lord Veritas. Why are you all- why are you talking like you've already decided you're going to lose? I asked, fresh with his revolves. Because I have lost these stabs, no one could stop him. I crossed my arms from my chest, so that's it. You're just going to accept defeat. You're not even going to try. James re remained silent, biting down- Am I also speaking alien language when they're watching me? I have a feeling I am, right? James remained silent, biting down his lower lip, giving me a death glare. If that were my brother, I would do anything I could save his life, I say honestly. <laughs> You think I haven't tried, James growls loudly, his eyes briefly flicking to a blue hue. What is this putrid device? James grunts, trying to look behind himself to see the bracelet on his wrist. It's preventing him from phasing. It's working. I turn to face him and bend down to my knee. Don't stop trying then. You can save her. Shut your mouth hole. You do not know the terror that is coming, the true nature of Lord Veritas. Then help us. You know everything about him, and we have the power and numbers to beat him. Together, I believe we can save your sister. <laughs> help you, James laughs. I was the one that kidnapped you. Yes, better roles have been reversed, and I think you could be a great ally. You have a mad thought pro- You have a mad thought process, princess. 
I've been trying to get you to reconsider this entire time. You want to save your sister, and I don't want plan to blow up. I think our interests are aligned. So what will it be? Will you help us or stay in this prison? I offer him the choice. James clicks his tongue at him, glaring at the ground. Somehow I managed to get all the parties convinced. Forrester Inc. has excellent lawyers. They were able to draw up a contract in just a few hours that detailed everything. From me being the designated translator because they don't understand alien language, to their caretaker, to being very limited in what they can do and cannot do. In exchange for various schematics and pa patent, as well as the full cooperation of both Eok and James. I mean, there's quite a few naysayers and reluctance, but both Eok and James are willing to side with us for the upcoming attack against Earth. We'll have to uphold a few rules here and there before I can get them out of here. I've finally signed the contract. The Oath Keeper will, involve, will be involved as well, which is who we're waiting for. Uh. You! James exclaims once he enters the office and spies Eok sitting in a chair at the desk. Uh. Eok nearly jumps inside his own skin and yells, I'm going to turn your insides out and strangle you with them, he threatens, and rushes over to eat towards Eok. However, one of the bodyguards keeps him in check and pulls back on his chains, causing him to stagger backwards. <laughs> Eok whimpers, looking at me with worried um. eyes. I'm not sure this will work. Huh? Why does he look so angry? What's the matter? Asks Neil, looking at the scene unfold between James and Eok. Oh, he's just happy to see one of his crew members alive, I say with a big smile. Um. Big dude looks like he's about going to strangle the little dude, where I so accurately, acute, acutely or accurately, accurately observes. I quickly jab in the side of with my elbow. Let's not start off things. Neil shuffles some of the documents mm. on his desk. Now that all the papers were signed, we just need to wait for... Huh? Oh, you're the Oath Keeper? Damn, you're making some big bucks, right? Darling, the door to the office bursts open. A woman wearing very sophisticated and expensive clothing marches inside. Her eyes are covered with, by a giant set of glasses. Mm. It's about time you called. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. She says with a slight pout. Neil grimaces at her behavior. He pushes his glasses off the bridge of his nose. <sighs> We're here for a job, Oathkeeper. He stresses her superhero name. So that's Oath Keeper. First time I've seen her, I didn't even know it was a woman. The woman surveys the situation. There's several people in the room, but the one that stands out the most. Oh, oh my! She exclaims when she notices Eok, the one, the odd one out. Hmm. Would you look at that fantastic skin color? She gushes as she walks up to Eok. Eok doesn't know how to react and decides it's best to play opossum and not move. Neil gestures towards the three mm. of us. We require two oaths. He explains. Huh? Too, she echoes, so, sounding surprised. That's highly unusual. Mm. I know it's a family business and all, but surely you're asking a bit too much here from little old me, she complains. Oh. Neil sighs, you'll be compensated, of course. Hello, I'm Michiko Melody. I introduce myself. I'm the one who requested oh. you. Oh, darling, you've definitely seen better days, she says, worriedly looking at the bruises on my arms. She stands uh. straight. All right, all right, who's taking the oath and who's the keeper, she asks. I'm a little confused. Mm. Seems I'm dealing with a newbie, she tuts disapprovingly. Oh. To be honest, I personally thought you were a myth, says Ray. <laughs> well, I am quite dreamy, she chuckles. Uh. The one who takes the oath will be the one who cannot break it. The keeper will be the one to keep the oath, and they're able to break it whenever they wish, Neil explains. Oh, so... The keeper can be like, yeah, okay, we're kind of done with this, I don't care anymore, and break it off, and then the oath person could just live scot-free? Yeah. He looks at me, Miss Melody, you're the keeper, both of them are the oath takers. Huh? This little darling is the keeper. You know what ha what happens when someone breaks an oath, right? Mm. They die. Oh fuck! You you oathers better not know. <laughs> better keep your word. I don't want to die. They die, right? Finishes for her. At least that's what the rumors mm. are. Correct. Both of them will die. She says cheerfully. So it's in your best interest to uphold the oath. Okay? No take backs. Okay, so they both die. The oath and the keeper. It's like just a double double whammy. Right here, it's a technically a triple whammy. James suddenly takes a step uh. forward. How will we die? Everyone turns to look at him. He's been quiet this entire time, listening in on us. I've already explained to him what was going to happen, but he has a better understanding of the situation now. Um. What was that now? Is he a foreigner? Asked the Oath Keeper, a little confused. Uh. Darling, you know this only works if you both speak the same language, right? You have to understand what oath you're taking. I can understand him just fine, I reassure. He asked how we'll, mm -hmm. how, how we'll die. Well, once the oath taker has broken their oath, both the keeper and taker's hearts stop beating instantly, she explains. If Eok and James breaks the oath, we will both die. I am putting a lot of faith in them. Mm. I'm having some serious doubts about this. How can we trust these aliens? I don't want my sister to end up dead, Ray complains. My eyes flicker over towards James, the one I'm most worried about. I trust them not to do anything stupid, I say. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm the one taking the oath, then, says James with a sneer. Since we've crossed paths, you've done nothing but make irrational decisions that should have gotten you killed. 
Granted, sneak sneaking Nornis out of the palace was pretty stupid of me. I'll give him that. But everything else was done out of survival. Huh? What's he saying, us, o Oathkeeper? And then Dark, as much as anyone else. Nothing. He wants to go first. I answer him for him. James shoots me a glare. Huh. All right, then please stand in front of each other. She instructs us. James slowly drags his feet across the floor and walks huh. towards me. Put out your right arm, she continues. I stretch out my arm in front of me. James mimics my action, though he has to stretch out both arms since he's still chained. The Oathkeeper takes both of our hands and places mine on top of James with hers holding us together. Suddenly, I feel something tremble, like it's vibrating deep within me. James looks slightly surprised as well. A symbol lights up on the lights up on the back of the Oathkeeper's hand. It's a circle with many faded lines. Mm. Speak your oath and you may for, be forever bound to it, she says in a much deeper voice than before. Mm. Go ahead, Miss Melody. He has to repeat what you say, verbatim. Neil instructs me. I take a deep breath and look at James. Here it goes. I will not harm those of the human race, it began. James' eyes narrow. For a brief second, doubt settles in the pit of my stomach, and I believe he won't go through with it after mm. all. I, he starts, making me exhale in relief, will not harm of those of the human race. The symbol of the Oathkeeper ha ha Oathkeeper's hand blinks, and one of the lines in the circle burns into her skin. Uh -huh. Go on, say the next line, Neil urges me. I look back at James, trying to calm myself down, despite the constant humming in my body is experiencing. This feels so, I'm not sure how to describe it, final, serious, like I'm at gunpoint. I will cooperate and do as I'm told by the members of the Defense Against Extraterrestrial Terrorism Team. As of now, that includes almost everyone in this room. James slowly exhales, taking his time to speak. I will cooperate and do as I'm told by the members of the Defense Against Extraterrestrial Terrorism Team, he repeats. Another line of the symbol burns to the Oathkeeper's skin. I will not contact or communicate in any way with the extraterrestrials who sent me to Earth. James follows me along, and another line is added to the circle. We're almost done. I will do anything in my power to help defeat any extraterrestrial threat against Earth. James smilingly repeats after me. And the final part. I will not remove, deactivate, or destroy this bracelet on my wrist. Mm. I will not remove, deactivate, or destroy this bracelet on my wrist, James <sighs> tells. Oh my god. He's, he's hopeless. He's weak. If he doesn't... How can he help us? If he can't take that off! Is that the oath you take? Asks the oath keeper of James. You have to say yes, I tell him. He grunts slightly peeved at how long and thorough this is. Yes. In an instant, I feel something burn through my hand. I shriek in response, pulling it away. I hold my hand close to my chest. It stings. Ouch! James blinks down at his own hand, and I can see it from there. From here, the symbol is burning to his skin. It's like it transferred over from the oath, oath keeper to him. That's when I notice the same symbol is on the back of my hand, too. Oh, no wonder it stinks. Oh. That is a symbol of your oath, Oathkeeper explains. Only the Keeper may break it. How do I break it? I ask, suddenly beating myself over the head that I didn't ask this before I actually going through with oh. it. You chop off your hand, she says in a serious tone. <laughs> Wait, are you for real? I look at her, completely horrified. Upon seeing my reaction, she starts to laugh out loud. <laughs> no, you silly, nothing that dramatic. You just hold the hand that contains the oath to your heart and say you wish to break the oath. You can think it too. Hold the hand that contains the oath to your heart? Oh, well, that's kind of romantic in a way. I close my eyes, sighing heavily. I just ha ha about had a heart attack. Uh. You may unchain him now, guards. Neil instructs the guards holding James. They remove the chains from his wrist and ankles, leaving behind the bracelet. With his oath, he's not allowed to harm us, so he's not a threat anymore. He also can't fly away as soon as he can, as long as he continues to wear the bracelet. We have effectively neutered him and rendered him mm. harmless. I know you can't understand me, so as the founding member of the Defense Against Extraterrestrial Terrorism team, you will now be instructed to follow Miss Melody's command for the time being. James stares at him blankly. I quickly realize he doesn't know my last name. He means me. I pipe in awkwardly. My last name is Melody. The Oath Keeper claps her hands mm. together. Alright, next! Uh. Are you really sure about this? If neither of them break that stupid oath, you'll die. Rav warns me he's not happy about this one bit. Yeah, I thought about it. It's okay, Rav. I'll be fine. I hope. At least I trust Eok more. <laughs> Using my other hand this time, I repeat the same process with Eok. His last command differs from James. He's not allowed to remove James' bracelet as Eok does not have one of his own. And finally, both oaths are taken. I now carry two symbolic sim circles on the back of my hands. Oh. Earthlings have very sophisticated technology, Eok says in amazement. I giggle a little. It's not technology, it's just something someone was born with. A lot of people here have unique abilities. Uh. Just like the princess. Yes, just like me. Wait. Alright, I turn to the both of them. I honestly tilt my head to the side. I forgot to tell you, but I lied from the moment you took me aboard your ship. I'm not a princess at all. I'm just a regular civilian on Earth. Uh, just to let y'all know, by the way, I'm not a princess. But you can still call me that if you want. 
out of everything we've done and said today, this is what gets James' jaw to drop open. I just dropped that bombshell on them after the whole oath situation. But I mean, you know. How are they gonna know what a princess is supposed to act and behave like? I could be like a casual princess. <laughs> Undercover one, I don't know. But then, yeah, this is where we're gonna stop for today's episode. The story's getting a little better. Once we land it on Earth, which is crazy. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.